Hey everybody, this is Dave from Motels here, and I'm here to tell you a little story about little markings on your pistons and your engine blocks. On your piston, you might notice a tiny, tiny little marking, a tiny little letter, or on your block, you might notice a bunch of letters. They might go A, D, C, D, or B, C, C, A, or something like that. So here's the deal, is that you know, everything varies when you make it. First thing that you learn in statistics class, including my statistics class, is that you have a machine and it's making the same thing over and over and over. There is going to be some variation. And it might be very, very small variation that you have to measure with a microscope, or it might be relatively big that you can see with a hand-wielded micrometer or ruler. And that's the way it used to be with the automated machinery at Trenton Engine and other Chrysler plants, the engine plants, and everybody's engine plants. You bore out your cylinder, and it'll be slightly different depending on the state of the tooling, the weather, the material. You know, there's variations in the metal. There's variations in weather. All these things, they all add up, and just randomness that we don't know why it's happening, but it's happening. So what they did was they said, you know, these variances are so large that if we just put any piston into any cylinder, some of them will barely fit and they'll be tight. And, you know, you'll have problems there because they'll drag and it'll be more resistance and it'll wear out maybe uh, the engine faster. In other ones, they'll be too loose and you'll be blowing oil out and you'll have low compression. And the seals are only meant to have a certain range that they'll work in. So what they did was they marked, they measured each cylinder and they measured each piston and they marked them by taking a, a die and a hammer and going bam, 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 bam until they had the letter. Now, according to uh, my source here, who is a retired uh, worker at Trenton Engine, Dave Van Buren, that in the uh, V8 and Slant 6 era, they ran from A through G's. And then if they were overboard by 0.02 inches, there were a whole bunch more classifications. So they wanted to get things pretty, pretty close to what they were supposed to be. And they would mark both the cylinder again, and they had pistons varied. So they basically look in the bin, you know, they'd see the engine had a C on this cylinder. So they'd look in the bin for a C sized piston and they'd put it in. Uh, when they went on to the four-cylinder engines, the 2.2 and the 2.5, the tolerances were better, and they ran just from A through E. And uh, he thinks that it was about 0 0.0003 or 0 0.0004 inches that separated each one. So we're not talking about stuff that you would see with your naked eye. They had to measure it more carefully because these are very, very small variations, but they are still very important for your engine. So Dave said that one of the first jobs he had on the V8 assembly line was running a teletype machine. So when a block was loaded onto the assembly line, he would put in the type of engine and the bore sizes in order. And then it would print out in the piston area and they'd load up uh, the right number of pistons, wrist pins and connecting rods, assemble them together and send them to the line in the sequence. Now, apparently, uh, some people would go around looking at the new engines and trying to find the ones that were overboard or at least had the largest variation, the largest cylinders, just again from random variation. And they would want to use those for racing because every little bit helps. Now, over time, they were able to manufacture with much greater precision. You know, everything got more precise, the tolerances got smaller, and it got to the point by the time that Trenton engine was making V6 engines, they were able to trash the entire system and just have one size piston, one size cylinder, and know it was exactly right and move on from there. So that's progress. But if you open up your vintage engine or your, you know, your 2.2 engine, which I guess today is vintage, if you open that engine up and you see a bunch of letters, now you know what they're all from and what they, and why they're there. DCCD, don't try to figure out the acronym. It's not an acronym. And I'll see you soon at motels.com where I hang out.